Hello and welcome to a video on congruency. So, what do we mean by congruency or things that are congruent? Well, it relates to geometry and it's all to do with things being the same. So, I've got two triangles here that I've drawn out. They're not drawn to scale. However, if I were to take this triangle on the left and I were to rotate it and move it in this direction over here, then it could fit directly on top of this triangle. So these two triangles, they're identical, um, but one is just a rotated version of the other. So if I were to rotate this triangle and move it in this direction, it would fit directly on top of this triangle here. So we would say that this triangle and this triangle are congruent. And congruent shapes always have corresponding sides. So let's think about which sides correspond with which, and you can probably see that from the dimensions that I've already put down. So this side here, well, that corresponds with this side here. So we could say that side AB, side AB is equal to side DE. And if we look at this side here, so side, side length AC, which is the four centimeter length, well, that correspond with this length up here. So FD, we can say that AC equals FD. And finally, we can see that side length BC, side length BC, well, that will correspond with FE. So side length BC is equal to FE. So if we have two shapes where the corresponding sides are equal, then those two shapes are congruent. And there is a symbol for congruency. So let's write this down. So we've got triangle ABC. So triangle ABC. Now the symbol for congruent, it's very similar to the equal symbol. Okay, but we just do a squiggly line above the equal symbol. So this is the symbol for congruent. And when we say what triangle it's congruent to, we need to be really careful about the letters that we use so that we match up corresponding sides. So what triangle is it congruent to? Well, we're starting with A on this one. So A, you can see, is between the... Uh, so it separates the 2 centimeter line and the 4 centimeter line. So on this triangle over here, that is going to be this point here. So we're going to start with D. And then we go to B, so we're going along the two centimeter line from A to B. So we're gonna go from D to E. So D, E, and then finally, we're gonna go from here, we go from B to C. So that's the five centimeter line. So we're going down here to F, so D, E, F. So triangle A, B, C is congruent to triangle D, E, F. So in order for two shapes to be congruent, we need to be able to pick one of them up and move it and be able to place it directly on top of the other shape. Now, how can we do that? There's three different ways we can do that. So in the example that we've given, what have we done? Well, the first thing we've done is we've rotated the shape. So we've turned it. So let's write that down here. We've rotated the shape. Okay. Now, if we just rotate the shape, it's going to look the same as this, but it's going to be over here. So we also need to move it to the right. Now, another way of saying move is translate. So translate or translation. So we've translated the shape. We've moved it from the left to the right, and we've also rotated it. And if we do that, this shape will fit directly on top of this shape. But there is another way we can um, shift it, and that is by reflection. So we can reflect the shape as well. So as long as we can either rotate, translate, or reflect a shape, or we could do a combination of all three, and it lands directly on top of the other shape, then those two shapes are congruent. Now, before I finish this video, there is one more important thing you need to know about congruency, and that is that the corresponding angles are also the same. So we know that the corresponding sides are equal, but also if we look at the angles, so this angle here, that separates the two centimeter line from the five centimeter line. So that corresponds with this angle here. If we were to measure these two angles, they would also be exactly the same. So we could write that out. So we could say that angle 
ABC, which is this angle here, so angle ABC, well that is equal to angle, so this angle here is going to be DEF, so angle DEF. Likewise, if we look at um, this angle here, so this is um, angle BCA, so angle BCA, well that is going to be equal to this angle here. It's the angle that separates the 4 centimeter line from the 5 centimeter line. And actually if we do two lines to represent that, because these two looks like these two are different. So angle BCA is equal to angle, so we're starting off with the, starting off here, it's going from B to C, which is the 5 centimeter line. So that's going to be EFD. So angle EFD. And then finally, this angle here, let's give that three lines. Well, that is equal to this angle. So angle uh, CAB, so angle CAB. Well, that is going to be equal to, so we're starting off with C and we're going to A, so that's the four centimeter line. So that's going to be F. D E angle F D E. So in summary, with congruent shapes, the corresponding side lengths are the same, and also the corresponding angles are the same. And if we can either rotate, translate, or reflect one of the shapes onto the other one, or a combination of all three, then those two shapes are congruent. In the next video, we'll look at some more shapes uh, and work out whether shapes are congruent or not. Hopefully I will see them.